Hey everybody, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and welcome back to another episode of C++ Crash Course. So we're going to continue looking at, you know, new things that were added in the C++11 standard. And today we're going to talk specifically about smart pointers. So, you know, we've gone over what pointers are and we've also gone over how they can be um, kind of a headache sometimes because we have to, you know, kind of manually uh, manage what they're pointing at, right? So if we're, you know, allocating a bunch of stuff on the heap and we've got a pointer to it, we have to make sure that, you know, for every new, we have a delete. That way we're not, you know, just you know, allocating memory and then never freeing it. But smart pointers, um, they help us handle these type of things. So they give us this concept of, you know, allocating something on the heap, but, you know, making sure that it gets let go if nothing else points to it anymore. So let's go ahead and look at our example for today. So let's look at smart pointers. So uh, we'll have to include something else from the standard library this time, which will be this uh, memory. So we'll include memory. And so the first thing we'll talk about is a shared pointer. So a shared pointer is exactly what it kind of sounds like. So shared pointers are valid while at least there is one uh, shared pointer that points to the data. And then uh, when the last pointer say goes out of scope, um, whatever it's pointing to is freed, All right? So here what we'll do is we'll create a shared pointer uh, and this is templatized, so we'll create a shared pointer to an integer. Uh, we'll call it shared int one, and then we'll uh, we'll allocate some memory on the heap, right? And so we'll create another a new integer allocated on the heap, um, and we'll initialize it with a value of five. Now, basically, what happens is every time we create a uh, shared pointer, you know, we'll increment a variable, right? Uh, and that variable is going to be you know a count of how many uh, how many references to this piece of memory um, there is. So at this point, when we do shared int one, there's a single reference to the piece of memory that has this integer five in it. Uh, so when we do this, we'll create another shared pointer. And when we do uh, when we do a copy, right? So when we set shared int two equal to shared int one, uh, the copy constructor uh, that exists for it, um, it will uh, increment that variable for us. So when we go ahead and print, um, we can print the, the number of uses, right, uh, using use count, which will print out that variable that counts how many of these shared pointers point to a specific part of memory. Um, we can find that with use count, so uh, it'll print out two in this case. But you know, there's times where we don't necessarily want a, uh, we don't necessarily want something to be an owner, right? Maybe we just want, say, you know, a normal pointer to something. Uh, in this case, we can use a weak pointer, right? And so you may ask yourself, well, why not just use a raw pointer, you know, just the actual memory address? Well, you know, it turns out memory addresses aren't always that great because they don't tell you really anything. They're, they're just an address. But when we have a weak pointer, we can figure out if a piece of memory is valid. Uh, not just if the pointer is null, but if the memory that it points to has been deallocated. So in this case, what happen, uh, What we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a weekend and we'll set uh, set it equal to shared at one, right? So that's our shared pointer up here, but it won't increment that variable that tracks how many owners there are. Uh, so in this case, when we, uh, you know, call use count again from the weekend, you know, even though it points to the same piece of memory, it's not an owner. And this is typically, uh, you know, sometimes we just don't want an owner. And then there's also cases where, uh, you know, cyclic references get uh, kind of messy when all of a sudden you have uh, two shared ends that say point to each other. Uh, so uh, we'll also uh, talk about a couple of things we can do. So we can actually upgrade a, a weak pointer. So when we call weekend.lock, we uh, upgrade um, the weak pointer to be a shared pointer. So uh, we'll go ahead and just use an auto type that we've talked about previously. And we'll just do auto shared int three is equal to weak int dot lock. Uh, so this will convert a weak pointer to a shared pointer. And then we'll go ahead and just print out the use count again. And we'll see that unlike when we created this weak pointer uh, and copied the address right here, uh, this will actually uh, increment the reference count uh, or increment the number of owners that there are. So this will, this will print three this time instead of two. Uh, and then we can, you know, we can reset these shared pointers. So if we're done with the pointer, um, to a specific piece of memory, we can get rid of it, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, do reset, and we'll check uh, we'll check two things. So after we reset shared int one and shared int two, uh, we'll 
track the use count. And so this will point out one this time because just this weak pointer that we upgraded is the only thing that actually points to this, uh, the only owner that points to this memory anymore. Uh, so it's still valid. There's just one shared pointer that points to it now. So this will be one. And then there's also a method for figuring out if this is the only thing that points to this piece of memory. And that's this dot unique, right? So this will print out one in this case, right? So it'll return a one. Okay, and then we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and uh, reset this one as well as so we can get rid of the last pointer. And then we can actually just check, like I said, that we can't do necessarily with a raw pointer. We can check to see if it's valid. So we'll take this last pointer that we just reset and we'll do dot get, right? And so we're not going to get a seg fault like we would if we tried to dereference a memory address that was freed. So this will just tell us, uh, you know, whether or not uh, this shared int is valid or not. So if it's zero, it will be invalid. Uh, okay, and then we have, you know, a final thing that isn't, you know, terribly exciting, but it is kind of the natural progression of things. So we can also create a unique pointer. So unique pointers are the only owners to a piece of memory, right? So we can't have shares here. Uh, and so, you know, just like shared pointers, though, as soon as, you know, the, as soon as a unique pointer goes out of scope or nothing or, you know, goes away, um, it will go ahead and free this memory that it allocates as well. So let's go ahead and print this out. So we'll compile or let's go ahead and run the program. So let's compile it. So we'll call it G++. Um, we'll set the standard equal to C++11 and then dash O and then smart pointers .cpp, and then we'll put in our smart pointers. So let's run it. So we see that um, after we create two shared pointers, we've got a use count of two. When we assign a uh, uh, when we assign a weak pointer, it doesn't increment that uh, it doesn't increment this variable that tracks how many owners there are. So it's still two. Uh, when we upgrade it using lock, uh, upgrade the weak pointer to a shared pointer, it goes to three. After we get rid of uh, two of them, uh, two of the shared pointers by calling reset. Um, the number of owners goes down to one, and we also can check uniqueness to see if it's the only person pointing to this piece of memory. In that case, we get a one, and then we can also check, uh, unlike just having you know an address stored as a pointer, we can check to see if it's valid or not, right? Is it with that um, uh, by just checking the boolean, right? Uh, so when we uh, that that boolean value when we do dot get will be a zero if it's invalid uh, which is it which it is in this case because we called reset on shared int three uh that was the unique and the only pointer to the piece of memory that integer that we allocated originally and then like i said the unique uh the our final uh oops our final pointer down there at the very bottom isn't terribly exciting, so we don't print anything out. The unique pointer down here, but that's just exclusive ownership, right? So instead of having multiple shares, it's nice to sometimes, you know, declare something that it only has a single share. All right, so that's going to do it for uh, this example. So shared shared pointers are uh, a convenience and a programmability thing where we can, um, you know, we don't have to worry as much about uh, memory management. We can, you know, uh, we can let this utility help us help us uh, deal with our uh, deallocation of memory. So uh, that's going to do it for today. Like I said, feel free to check me out on github.com slash coffee before arch. Uh, we've got all the code for all the series that I do here. Here we looked at C++ crash course. I've got links to a couple things here. So I've got links to all my videos, links to the files associated with those videos. And then uh, coming soon, I've got uh, uh, tutorials, uh, that I've been making as PDFs. So you don't have to watch the videos, you can just download these. And maybe eventually I'll staple them all together into one big, uh, one big comprehensive guide to an introduction to programming across multiple languages and multiple concepts like parallel programming. But that's going to do it for, um, for this episode. We looked at smart pointers today, so download this, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.